Hello everyone and welcome to First Baptist Church of Crystal River. My name is Pastor Tim Lancey and I want to thank you for joining me for this special July the 4th edition of the Sunday Morning Sermon. Well, happy Independence Day everyone. Today we celebrate 245 years of freedom and my family and I always love to celebrate Independence Day. Uh, we love the patriotic songs that we only get to sing about once a year, uh, grilling out hamburgers and hot dogs on the grill, getting together with family and friends, and of course, the wonderful fireworks at the end of the day. And for the past few years, my family and I have gone to an amusement park in Orlando, Florida, and we enjoyed the spectacular fireworks out over the water with the patriotic music playing in the background. It was a fantastic celebration. And all day long, we are reminded that we live in a free country. We live in a country that's worth celebrating. But as we hear those patriotic songs and enjoy those fantastic fireworks, <clears throat> we're also reminded that freedom is never free. On July the 4th, 1776, 245 years ago, 56 men made a daring decision. Together they said, we will no longer take orders from our former authority. We have reached a maturity whereby we intend to govern ourselves. So in a dramatic moment, they each signed their name to a single piece of paper. These 56 men didn't know how effective their paper would be. Would it actually bring freedom to the group they represented? Would the signing of their names mean they might hang? Yes, they said, we know the possible cost, but even so, we sign it anyway. The time has come for someone to declare our freedom. We are a new country, a new people. Here and forever is our declaration of independence. In 1776, 56 men put their life on the line to secure our political freedom. Some 2,000 years ago, one man put his life on the line to secure our spiritual freedom. That man's name is Jesus Christ. Hear these words of Jesus recorded in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verses 31 through 36, as Jesus explains our declaration of independence in a spiritual sense. John chapter 8, beginning with verse 31. <clears throat> to the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Many today use the word freedom as an expression of individual rights and choices. They talk about freedom as if it should have no limits, no restraints, and no cost. But freedom always comes with a cost. Freedom is never free. It's bought with a price. The freedoms we enjoy today didn't come cheap. All our freedoms were paid for by the blood of patriots from the Revolutionary War to the present time. We enjoy freedom today because men and women sacrificed and paid the price yesterday. Our forefathers risked their fortunes, their families, their reputations, and their honor to secure our political freedom. Freedom is never free. Freedom is always expensive. 
Our forefathers paid for our freedom with their blood and the blood of their children. The price is always paid in blood. Jesus Christ came to earth and he risked fortune, reputation, and honor to secure our spiritual freedom. Now the enemy in this case <clears throat> is not a nation, but sin. Many today would talk about sin as if it's their friend, but sin is a cruel, deceptive enemy. Sin wants to destroy your health. It wants to ruin your marriage. It wants to rip apart your family. Sin wants to corrupt God's church. Sin leads you down a road called failure, then likes to rub your face in it with guilt and shame. We've all done some things that have hurt others and hurt ourselves. Perhaps you failed at marriage. You failed at parenting. You failed at finances. You failed at religion. You failed. And the guilt of your failures and poor decisions have left you feeling anxious, depressed, and empty. Oh, you want to be free. You want to be forgiven. But you don't know the way. Well, the good news is that Jesus Christ has come to be the way for us. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid the price, the full price, for all of your sins. He paid it all for you. He shed his blood for every wrong thing that you and I have ever done. On the cross, Jesus exclaimed, it is finished. Jesus uses a term that means it is paid. The debt for sin is paid in full. Jesus Christ has paid the bill for your spiritual freedom. Now you can be forgiven. Now you can be set free. You don't have to go through life burdened with guilt and shame. You don't have to go through life following an empty religion. Jesus Christ wants to be your forgiver. He paid for it all, and he's willing to forgive it all. Every sin forgiven. No more guilt, no more shame. That is spiritual freedom. Jesus Christ wants to be your leader in life. He wants to come into your life and change you from the inside out. He wants to lead you into a right relationship with God. He wants to give you the gift of eternal life in a place in heaven with him forever. Today, we celebrate political freedom, and we are so glad and so blessed to be free people. Yet there is a freedom that's even greater than political freedom, and that is spiritual freedom. Jesus Christ wants to set you free by giving you spiritual freedom. You have a choice to make. Just as our forefathers made a choice, a critical choice, for political freedom in 1776, so now you must make a choice about your spiritual freedom in 2021. Are you ready to sign your name to the spiritual declaration of independence? Are you ready to receive the spiritual freedom that Jesus Christ is offering you today. If you're ready to receive Jesus as your savior, if you're ready to turn your life over to him, then I wanna lead you in a very simple prayer. I'm gonna say the words and let me encourage you to repeat those words with me. Just say this, <clears throat> God, I admit that I'm a sinner. I've done some wrong things in my life. I believe that Jesus Christ died for every sin, for every wrong thing that I've ever done. I believe that Jesus was buried and I believe that Jesus rose from the dead on the third day. I confess 
that I need Jesus to forgive my sins and to lead my life. Amen. If you said that prayer with me today, then the Bible says that you are now a member of God's family. Jesus really did just forgive all of your sins. He wrote down your name in heaven's book, making a reservation for you. And then Jesus has come to live inside of you through his Holy Spirit. He's there to lead you every single day. What a wonderful thing that Jesus has offered us. It's the gift of spiritual freedom. We no longer have to live for sin. We have a new master. His name is Jesus Christ. And we can celebrate that freedom. Well, let me encourage you today <clears throat> to celebrate the freedoms that we enjoy here in the United States of America. Let's celebrate the fact that God has blessed us with political freedom. And at the same time, if you know Jesus as your Savior, or if you've just asked Jesus to be your Savior, let's celebrate our spiritual freedom. We are truly free in Jesus Christ. We're no longer the slaves to sin. Our new master is Jesus Christ. Well, again, let's celebrate today. And until we meet again, may God bless you and may you stay safe.